Boozed and Confused is a comedy and weird topic podcast. Adult language may be used probably by me. While our episode topics may be educational in nature, we are not responsible if your children start dropping the F-bomb to their kindergarten class. Listener discretion is advised. Ahoy, mateys. Yar. <laughs> we have a pirate on this podcast. <laughs> uh, I'm Carol Ann. This is Matt. And welcome to an episode of Boost and Confused after Boosed. we had to skip a week. And confused. Uh, the executive producer was very difficult the last uh, week or two. And we really just needed some time. She just so. needed to like empty out her ears or something. She yeah. was she was just being a punk. <laughs> so all is good, uh, but we really needed some time away. So we're back with a really uh I don't know. I don't know what to call this. It gives me the heebie jeebies. I don't like this. It's just because you're old. It is because I'm it's because old. Because you're old. Yeah. Um all right, but before we get into it, a uh, couple of housekeeping items that you already know about. And you could skip like 30 seconds ahead if you really want. Um, first one, we're on all your favorite social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Um, if social media is not really your thing, but you want to reach out to us, you could send us an email at boostandconfusedpodcast at gmail.com. Um, I always enjoy hearing from you guys, whether it's email or Insta. Um I don't think we've gotten any good YouTube comments lately, so that's blame, that's fine. Blame the algorithm. Yeah, I do too. Um, gosh, what's next? Uh, oh, if you like the pod and you want to support us, the best way that you can do that is by leaving a review and or subscribing or following wherever you get your podcast. It does make a difference, um, and I just appreciate it. And I know Matt maybe appreciates it too <laughs> if if you're a beer maker and you want to sponsor me <laughs> i'll say whatever you want i will be uh the mouth diarrhea of whatever you want me to say uh for a boo sponsorship it's fine yeah okay so um yeah and if you leave us a review and you take a screenshot and send it to us we'll send you some boost and confuse stickers in the mail for free um to your house for nada, nothing. Yeah, yep. and we won't even come to your house. No, <laughs> God, why would you say that? I will hand deliver it. I'll, I'll dress up as whatever you want me to dress up as. I We're not going to do, do that. I'll do this it. This is why people give us fucking P.O. boxes instead of their home addresses, and I can't blame them. Not that we have the time, obviously, to come to your house. We're not going to do that, but... God, now, now everyone's like, wow, Matt and Carolyn are a bunch of fucking freaks. <laughs> <laughs> if you send me your address and a request, I will try and fulfill it. We're not doing that. We'll just send you some shit in the mail. And if you want to send it to a P.O. box, that's totally fine, too. I don't have time for anything weird. So, um, all right. And uh, the last one is... What are you drinking? We are we are both drinking. Yeah, this is my first beer in a while. It's been a hot minute. It's been about a fortnight. Yeah. Um, I have a Guinness. It's Guinness. It is period. Guinness. I'm drinking a Lining Kugel's Juicy Peach, refreshing and tart with natural peach flavor. It tastes like I'm drinking um, peachios, which is perfect because I really had a sweet tooth today. Um, also I had cake for breakfast. Um, I saw that in the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the, uh, cake container in the gar. or no, I saw the Tupperware in the, in the, in sink. the dishwasher. Yeah, yeah. Whichever. Yeah. One of those yeah. things. Um, it's fine. You're an adult. We're you fine go, here. You go, yeah. I pay fucking mortgage and taxes, whatever. So, uh, without further ado, uh, go ahead. Take it away. It's your episode today. Ooh, careful with that. Uh, no, we're talking about, uh, technology. <laughs> yeah um there's this thing called tiktok apparently yeah yep the ticky tackies what's the deal with tiktok <laughs> i just know that um i can't download it i'm not gonna download it um but that's all 
Yeah, me neither. All my all my students have it, and they're like, "Oh, can can you be in our TikTok?" I was like, it's like "No, I'm I, gonna do a TikTok dance. <laughs> I'm gonna ruin your TikTok." No, I mean, there's so many cool technologies. Is that a plural word? Yeah. There's so many cool things out there, but we're like I'm not talking about like water purifying devices or like those like cool voice command lights that people have nowadays. Yeah, things that better humanity. Wi-Fi toasters. Yeah, exactly. We're going to talk about some of that dystopian, scary sci-fi tech. Yeah, of course we are, because it's, it's a mad episode. This is a me episode, and if it's not dystopian or existential... Then I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What year is it? It is 2022, and I got to say, actually, there have been a couple times this week, which you could tell how out of it I am um, with this, that I had to look what year it was, because for some reason I thought it was 2023, so... Oh, no. Usually... People forget, like, the first few months, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but never forward like that. Never forward. I'm not ready for next yeah, year. Yeah, no, no. Um, I would say it's, it seems like almost every year, even, like, every quarter of the year, there's some new, like, advancement or some, like, new technology coming out. It's like, you know, like, the newest cell phone data iPhone. network. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have so many technologies uh, like in our everyday life to the point where we probably forget about how much tech we actually have. Yeah, I would say that's pretty accurate. As we speak into our fancy microphones <laughs> As we speak into our in podcast front of microphones. our laptops. There's legitimately four laptops on this desk. Yeah. You know what's funny is I actually just saw something uh, on the Facebook uh, because I'm a millennial and still go on that. Um, that was talking about uh, it was like a single family home very uh like 70s looking picture and the caption was something like a a shoe a shoemaker or some shit like that uh Cobbler. could <laughs> support uh his entire family on one income and like still own this house back in like 19 19- 67 or something like that um and then of course all the comments were like well they only had one car they didn't have cell phones they didn't have tvs they didn't need the latest fancy schmancy technology and like that's a whole conversation for another time but i think it was really interesting to look at that and it's not that far in the past but really how advanced technology has become in the last you know few decades yeah yeah um, I was just going to say that I'm using a laptop as a laptop stand <laughs> yeah. right now. The amount of laptops in this house <laughs> is actually disgusting. It's ridiculous. It's fine. We've had a lot of jobs and we get yeah. we get laptops yeah. from our jobs. Uh, I don't even think I really like remember like pre-internet days. No, I definitely don't. I mean, like I do. I had internet growing up. I I mean, we had like the like dial phone up. Jack, don't pick the phone up. up. Yeah. yeah, we had that. But... I mean, like thinking about how I would like hang out with, with my friends, you know, there was just us just doing things. And um, I remember when one friend got like internet and we could watch music videos of like Outcast on like launch, Classic. Yahoo launch, I think. Yeah. 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 Those were the days. Um, like if our Wi-Fi were to go out like nationwide. We'd oh, be we'd screwed. be fucked. We'd be kind of screwed. Yeah, Everything. We would be- yeah everything would be down it's actually it's scary how dependent we are on certain technologies and um if you ever talk to somebody who's in the trades of like being a a, an hvac guy or you know anything like that like they'll never actually install like the really smart home technology like your smart thermostats or um you know you're like wi-fi pucks and shit like that they will just go with like whatever's the most simple because it's the least likely to have problems yeah how how else can i um raise the temperature in my house if i'm in like cancun well for I, the cats? I mean remember we <laughs> for the cats <laughs> um remember we were going on a vacation and like two days before the vacation was supposed to start our thermostat we have like a nest thermostat the thermostat broke and like it would still Mm. work you just couldn't control the anything from the phone it like wouldn't get any updates from wi-fi um but then there's also the concern of it just wouldn't work at all because you know it wasn't charging um 
Yeah, that was a problem. Ness like sent us a new one and it took like a week, but ugh. we got through it. Yeah. Yeah. We Unscathed. we we built back better. Ooh. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm still waiting for the big like solar storm to like knock out all the networks in the world yeah, for I at least not. a few days. No. Like how ugh, that would be so bad. That would be really scary. I mean, I work from home, so wouldn't be able to work for a couple of days. What would my students do without their distractions? I mean, what what would we do? What what am I gonna do? Read a book? Gonna go draw uh, on the sidewalk with some chalk. Yeah, yeah. You ever uh, you ever just watch like a futuristic sci fi film and wonder when will this happen? Y- yes, actually, like our entire sci fi binge over the past week. But those weren't really future sci fi uh... binges. They were just like D-list movies. We did have a a, a binge, a, of like a binging yeah. of sci-fi movies. Um, you know, like have you seen Blade Runner? Yes. The Matrix. Yes. Terminator. Yeah. Terminator. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Why did you say yes differently that time? <laughs> are you insinuating that I'm lying about the other ones? I think you are. No, it's because there's the Terminator ride at Universal, and it mm-hmm. scares the shit out of me. Even, like, the last time we went in, like, 2016, as a full-grown adult, it terrified me. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, I feel like a lot of these sci-fi flicks are, like, pseudo-warnings or, like, at least acknowledge that jumping headfirst into the future lumping on more and more technology um is just like taking away bits of ourselves yeah absolutely and also we don't understand the full implications of like half the shit we're doing right now so where does the wi-fi come from (laughs) you know i I still don't fully understand this stuff but you know and then looking back like hundreds of years people believed that we would have like self-propelled like sidewalks like you just stand and just pushes you along Uh, We'd have, like, flying cars, domed cities, um, and, like, machines that do everything for us. And the drawings are hilarious. Like, like we have, like, DJ Roomba upstairs. (laughs) We do. But they had, like, it looked like a coat rack with wheels and just had, like, a broom that would just sweep. It was so weird. Yeah. I mean, that that makes sense for the times. I also think... um... We could have some of that stuff right now. Like the technology probably exists, but it's probably just not economical or like feasible to really implement like wide scale. If you think about like the sidewalks that move, if you ever, you ever been to the airport, uh, they for sure have the little walkway thing. So I never use that. I feel lazy. Yeah, I do too. Um, I, have you ever seen the movie Wally? Oh, Wally. Yeah, I've seen. Of course, I've seen Wally. Yeah, that um, I think is a more realistic look at our futures. Oh, unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. I I can dig it. Uh, there's definitely a lot of things that have come true with like technology, like um, old films like Metropolis or stories like The Time Machine. Uh, looked into like all the maybes of what could be one day, and then explored like how civilization changes with the advances um they foresaw they foresaw uh the ideas of like video calls yeah that makes sense you know, and now we can't live without them <sighs> yeah you can't i i well you just joined a, a place that has like microsoft teams right oh my god i will say i just switched from an organization that just used to use zoom and now we have to use fucking Teams, and I hate Teams. And for everybody in corporate America that has to use Teams, I finally understand it. I get the anxiety, and um, it's awful. So this episode not brought to you by Microsoft. This episode <laughs> brought to you by Microsoft Office. Yeah. <laughs> it's everyday stuff. Yeah. So, like, they foresaw these things, but I, I think they, like, overestimated what we would do with our technology. You mean, like... We would actually put it to good use instead right. of yeah, instead of just like sitting on fucking Facebook let's and twerk, complaining. Let's twerk for ten seconds and get eighty-five million followers and a coffee endorsement. Yep, yep. 
don't get it twisted. I, I think the last 20 years have been insane in terms of changes we're experiencing. Um, like I was saying, like, I don't really remember like a pre Wi-Fi life. I, I do. I do. But it's like, you know, it's foggy. I don't I I remember like I was one of the last people in my friends groups to get a cell phone and I certainly did not have a cell phone that had internet connected to it when I got it um but I like I definitely remember pre-cell phone life I don't really remember pre-social media life if I'm gonna be honest which is kind of scary and I think like a big I don't know maybe that's why millennials are the way that they are we all grew up on myspace yeah, I had I had MySpace, I had Zanga. Um, oh yeah, Live Journal. I'm I'm very grateful to my parents for not having me get a cell phone until I literally was going to college, and and then it was like a rinky little like flip phone. Yeah, that would make sense. My first smartphone was like I bought it when I had my first job, so like I remember that part very well. Anyways, um. As a teacher, I see how the younger generation is heavily influenced by their technology. And it's like the distractions. It's the it's like they're always on guard in case they are like seen and they like have like an image to uphold like constantly. Yeah, I'm sure that's also I, I feel like it's really hard to grow up and be a kid these days. Like you like social media when we were younger was definitely not to the degree that like Instagram is today. And I think even if you're not on social media, like Instagram or TikTok and you're younger, like you're almost like an outcast. Like I, I really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I find it really fucking cool when people are like, oh, I'm not on social media. I used to have a coworker who was like, oh, I'm off the grid. Like you can't find me (laughs) anywhere. And he was not kidding. Like you, he doesn't even have like a LinkedIn, which is interesting in in our field. Um, but yeah, like you're, you're right. It's like always on and it's kind of like ingrained within, uh, I don't know the generations. It's like the phones are like glued in their hands. Or, or like their heads are always like cocked down while they're like in the hallway walking around. And their physical. Uh, oh yeah, that little bump yes. on people's necks. Yes, mm-hmm. and uh, I think I've been reading that um, kids like starting at a younger age are starting to have issues like with their thumbs and their hands um, because of the amount of technology that they are using in their day to day. Our hands are revolving. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's cool. Um, we're kind of getting towards my topic. A couple of years ago, I had a class read a book called Feed by uh, M.T. Anderson. Great book. Uh, it's about like a near future society where humans have physical connections to the Internet, like wired into their bodies. And it's called the feed. Uh, people can interact uh, with other people just like we do with like phones but like seamlessly in their minds so like there's a scene where a kid like calls their dad but they're like just talking and like their dad's like in their head um the characters will see things like pop-ups appear literally as they're walking past a store um people can be hacked or even like experience like drug-like highs by screwing around with their like linkedin gear it's it's wild and it's a young adult novel so it's a quick and easy read uh feed by mt anderson highly recommend uh it's on our book list i will also put we have a book list starting now first book on the list (laughs) i will also give my endorsement for that book because i i really enjoyed it it was a really easy fast read in like a day or two uh yeah it's really good also kind of crazy yeah and that that's kind of where we find our topic um we are Uh, steamrolling ourselves to human implants that will allow us to directly access information and entertainment using our own minds. Um, Like, is the future full of, like, human cyborgs? Undoubtedly, yes. Yeah, and our homeboy, Elon Musk. I I fucking hate Elon Musk. I'm fascinated by Elon Musk. Uh, Our homeboy, Elon Musk, seems to be invested in making this a reality. What what is his deal? Is he actually a cyborg himself who's trying to like 
Like I, I just don't, I don't understand what normal fucking guy is like, I'm going to buy Twitter. You can't stop me. I'm Elon Musk. I have the funding. He does have the funding. God, I just, I, I fucking hate Elon Musk. I'd say of all my social media platforms, Twitter is my least used one. Yeah. I really only use it for the pod and, oh, I don't know. That's it actually. I don't even know what I use mine for. I like retweet things for like contests and hope I win stuff. Uh, it happened once. I did win a contest. Yeah, I believe it. Uh, so we have a company. Um, it's called Neuralink. And it was first launched in 2016. And Neuralink has done research and experimented with adding teeny tiny brain implants that allow uh, brain machine interactions to occur. Uh, the name of the technology has been referred to as Brain Machine Interface, or BMI. That, uh, yeah, okay, go ahead. No, 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 no. Like, there's a lot of really amazing things that is that are being like touted with this stuff. I just my my ugh was with the BMI because Elon Musk like within the past week was like oh we can cure obesity with uh yeah with us so in in april 2017 neuralink announced that it was aiming to make devices to treat serious brain diseases uh in the short term with the eventual goal of human enhancement sometimes called transhumanism what the fuck does that even mean also like, if I have this implant and say somehow I become a, an Olympic Olympian athlete, would I be able to go compete in the Olympics? Or are they going to have a cyborg Olympics for me? I would love to see a cyborg Olympics, <laughs> like cyborg boxing. Um, Musk actually said that this idea kind of stemmed from his love of sci-fi. God, ugh, whatever. Oh, okay. did he ruin sci-fi for you? Yeah, now I can't watch any more D-list sci-fi movies. Oh. Thanks, Elon. Everybody go watch the movie Primer. Go, no, Just go fucking watch it. It's so good. Don't watch Primer. It's so good. Don't go do watch it. it. Don't do it. All right, go ahead. Uh, so uh, I have a very limited understanding of the um, <laughs> surgery that's required for this, uh, but uh, he, he, here it goes. Musk uh, defined the uh, neural lace um, as a layer above the cortex that helps transmit the electric pulses of the brain and convert it into information that can be Bluetoothed to technology and they can interact that way. Mm -hmm. Oof, yeah, that's, that's tough. So um, it wouldn't necessarily imply extensive surgical insertion uh but it does definitely sound like you are having your skull drilled open and something put carefully over the cortex of your brain uh c question does elon musk himself have one of these i don't think he would i think he has like dial up in his house still <laughs> yeah exactly he's like i'm not gonna use this shit. yeah exactly yeah uh, he said that the long-term goal is to achieve quote symbiosis with artificial intelligence unquote end quote uh because he perceives um a serious threat to humanity if technology goes unchecked so i, I guess he believes so let's put fucking brain chips in people how does that make sense if technology goes unchecked so we better put the technology in people and then we could control them all yeah we could what the fuck I <laughs> god I, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't realize how much I hated Elon Musk until this episode, actually. Wow. Wow. Sorry, Elon, who's listening to this episode. He seems so sad now. He'll, he'll tweet about this. Uh, so Elon Musk believes that this device will kind of be something like a video game. Uh, like saving a game situation, like where you save it, you can pick it up later and go back to it and stuff. Um, where you're able to like resume and upload your last like save state uh, and 
he was talking about addressing brain injuries or spinal injuries that make up for like whatever lost capacity the person has with a chip. So like it it gets crazy. It gets crazy. Um, so Neuralink had the goal to begin human testing in 2020, which did not happen and has been pushed back to this year. Um, not happened yet. Um, because like some recent events make me think that this might be a little further away than this year with human trials. Um, but uh, it seems extraordinarily close to human trials already. I don't know. Um, I've been pretty up to date with most of the new technology. Like I'm, you know, Wi-Fi. Use it. <laughs> yeah. Use we it all the it. time. <laughs> air conditioning. Uh huh. I can't live without it. Yep. I can't live without yep. air conditioning. Smartphones. Yep. Yep. Classroom technology. I'm down mm-hmm. with it. I'm mm-hmm. down with it. Um. But I think you and I are getting to the point where we're becoming the old people. Absolutely. Maybe I'm being dramatic. Like, may- no. maybe I'm being dramatic. <sighs> no, because I remember, like, even when we were looking at TVs, we were like, don't want a smart TV because something's going to fucking happen. Like, th- I just, I don't trust technology anymore. And I think a lot of it stems back from capitalism because at the end of the day, you're just a way for somebody else to make money, right? So, like, if they if they could, like, gouge you at any place possible, why wouldn't they? So what is it to say that, like, with a smart TV, they couldn't just enable an update to automatically come to your TV that says, oh, you want to watch uh, these shows or install this app? Okay, well, you have to pay a hundred more dollars or some shit like that. Where like it used to be like a one time purchase, you know. I just it's a, like a TV subscription. Yeah. <laughs> to use the TV, I was like, like I'm staring at our. I know it's it's TV. staring back at us. It's, hey, don't look at me. 